this site now I'm called Screaming in the Q&A with Luckiest Girl Alive. Um, at this time, please join me in welcoming some of the women who brought this remarkable story to the big screen. I want to start with one of the film's producers. She is currently the CEO of Made Up Stories. Her credits include basically all your favorites, Big Little Lies, Wild, Gun Girl. Please welcome Bruna Papandrea. <laughs>
it's so long ago I can't remember because I'm so old, but um, <laughs> yes, it was a conversation, but it was just really clear early on it was worth, you know, taking that short term. And you know, what interested you in coming on board, not just um, as an actor, but producer? Um, I like to have control. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I have to think about the, a, a short, like, um, elevator answer to this question, but <laughs> Um, I started, you do enough bad movies that you go, go, boy, I could have done that one better if I just had a tiny bit more control after they say cut. Um, and you work at it, right? Like, you can't just be like, and now I'm a producer. So you, you go and you ask and you, you know, you sometimes get someone that goes, well, you can be an EP or you can do this, you can do that. And there, there were a couple of films that I made that I was so proud of that just didn't really follow through on what they could have been. And I was like... Huh, I wonder if something could have been different behind closed doors. And when this project was brought to me, I, I'm trying to remember logistically, I was like, it's so good, but it it so easily can be messed up. Uh, and I just didn't want to go down that road again and go, it's not my problem, it's not my fault, it's their fault. And so I was like, well, if I can't point fingers at anyone but myself, I want to take the risk. And so I think when this was brought to me, I'm going to correct me if I'm wrong, but I was like, I'll do it, but I do want to produce it, mostly because I didn't want to put blame on anyone other than myself. And obviously, having read the book and seen the movie, it's it's very clear what's so appealing about the role, but it also looks incredibly intimidating. Was, was there any hesitation in taking on this part? No. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, you know, I, I, I've been doing this for 30 years, and I always they get asked, like, oh, whenever I do a drama, they're always like, well, this must have been really hard, or like, what, what, you know. No one ever asked me that when I've done comedies, yeah. ever. No one ever looked at my comedies and went, boy, that must have been hard. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, a comedy is much harder to do than any drama, but the industry associates crying on cue as fulfilling and making someone laugh less so, right? So when I look at this, it's just a character is a character, and it was somebody that I thought would be really fun to play. I, I talk about this a lot, but I do think that Jess's voice is so specific, and I love the cadence of her dialogue, and, and I, I find it to be just mess. I, I love it, that's the best way I can put it. So no, it wasn't intimidating, it was something that I was excited to do. But I do find it funny that no one ever, in any of the comedies that I've ever done, been like, how was that, was that hard? <laughs> like, yeah, that was pretty hard, thank you. <laughs> It's not a joke, it's a saying about, you know, uh, dying is easy, comedy is hard. Yeah. yeah, I always say comedy, here's my problem, well, this isn't looking at me, but whatever. I, I think when you do comedy, you do the same joke over and over again, and then you have to make sure that it's still going to be funny a year from now. And then oftentimes, you start playing this game of like, oh, maybe I can make the crew laugh, mm -hmm. or maybe I can do an old on this and that, and that's never what ends up on screen. It's always the original, it's always what's on paper, but you try to riff because you get a little bit bored of yourself. And it's keeping that exciting, that actually is pretty hard, I think. Um, when you do dramas, you don't improv. You stay very much on paper, so a lot of the work is with people like Bruno, like it's all in the back, it, you know, it, before you can start production, and a lot of comedy, a lot of the work is on, on the day of. Uh, Kiara, when you signed on to this project, well, I'm curious actually about the process of landing the role, but was Mila already attached? Did you know you would be sharing a role with her? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I, how did I sign on this movie? Um, I auditioned, and then I auditioned again, and then I auditioned again, um, and then they said, maybe we like you a little bit. Um, no, I mean, Mila was already attached, and I think Finn was attached shortly afterwards. Obviously, Mila was producing, and there was Jessica, and Bruno and I had worked together once long ago. Um, and um, obviously, I met and talked with Mike, who's the director of the film, about the character and kind of what he saw for the story and Audie's journey. I mean, the first time that I read the script, I think I was terrified. I mean, the, the kind of the young Audie role in this seemed like such a challenge. Um, and I was like, wow, the girl who does that, that's going to be hard. <laughs> um, and I think that that was like, okay, that girl has to be me because this is going to be hard and that's so exciting. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it seemed like something that I really wanted to be a part of and obviously it was an honor and people like telling you you look like Mila and like you could possibly act like young Mila. I'm like, please tell me. 
me over and over and over again. <laughs> preparing for this character in tandem, if you, you know, shared ideas, preparation, anything like that? Um, very little. Um, this was shot in peak of COVID, and we were living in different states at the time. And so our table read and our rehearsals were all done on Zoom. And all of us were in different parts of uh, the world. Uh, our director was in London. Our incredible producer was in Australia. The actors were scattered everywhere. Um, so very little time. But the beautiful thing, going back to being a producer, is they did they shot a lot of um, young Ani stuff the first two weeks of production while I was quarantined in Canada. But I got to watch the dailies every night. And so I think that was incredibly beneficial without putting weight on Kara to be like, well, what, what mannerisms are you doing? She could do whatever she wanted to do, and then I, I could just watch her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you really had to sort of set the stage for things. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess so, um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, we, we talked about it a little bit, I mean, the one thing that I did work on a tinge was that Mila has kind of a specific voice, so I did do some vocal coaching in hopes of kind of matching that tonality as much as I could, but in terms of like mannerisms and movement and all of that, I think it's super easy to get in your head and wonder where you're putting your hand and what you're doing, and I bite my nails, you cannot tell right now, but I really do. Um, and, you know, if you start being too aware of those kind of natural human things that you do, it starts to look unnatural. So it was definitely a gift that I was, I didn't have to think too much about it, and Mila was able to inform me. So. And then I had a cool list. <laughs> <laughs> she did. You, you talked about, you know, everything that the character goes through. I understood, like, in your very first three days of shooting, you had to shoot, like, three different crazy, emotional, traumatic scenes. Um, I'm sort of curious, not only how you prepared for that, but how you handled it after shooting. Like, do you have a way to decompress to leave your character behind at the end of the day? Um, yeah, what was up with those three days, guys? <laughs> Bruno? Yeah, Bruno, what was up with those three days? <laughs> well, actually, they all say it's better to get the hot stuff right out from. That's what I was saying. But, yeah, it was, you know, it was so funny because it, it's so funny hearing you both talk about it because Mila was part of looking at all the auditions, right, and choosing whether you would play your younger self as a producer. And um, I I will say, and this is, I've never felt this as much as this movie, because Miller makes jokes like, you disappeared when I came to set. But the truth, <laughs> did, the truth was, because we slid it up and it was during COVID, it was very important to me to be there for that stuff, the Kiara stuff, because it was something that I felt like a great obligation to like feel that we were protecting the young kids who were having to do that and you know and do it you know in a way that you know they had the emotional support and the physical support and all that stuff but see we but at least we did it in order you know I think that's good right that's good we did all the flashbacks we did all the flashbacks in order and um, we did that but can I just say one thing about the casting because yes. maybe I love actors, as anyone will tell you. Um, I love writers and actors. Um, and uh, directors aren't bad, but <laughs> I know less of them. Um, but what was interesting, and someone who saw the movie said this to me yesterday, and it really struck me, was there were people that looked more like Mila, is the truth. And I think one of the things that Kiara has, and I think is so beautifully articulated in your performance in the movie, is yet yeah, so I mean isn't she fucking incredible like I was just like For me, speaking to people about both performances, that's something that's really struck me, and hence, I did such a great choice. It's true. Like, see, I get teary because it's. I'm gonna cry, guys. <laughs> um, I will say one thing, which is kind of, off, I guess, off note, and not the answer to your question at all. But I have been to many SAC units in this theater, actually, um, over the years. And when I was like, uh, like 13 or 14, I remember I would come all the time, and it was so exciting. And the fact that I'm actually sitting up here now is the most insane thing. Guys, you watch me cry. I need to promise. 
stage, okay? Um, no, but back to the first three days of filming, um, we did the, uh, we started on day one with the um, school shooting, and then we did day two, we were also in the school shooting, and day three, we started with the sexual assault, and day four, we finished the sexual assault. So, um, yeah, it was pretty intense, but I think it was for the best. I mean, I think that we had a lot of time to rehearse kind of there once we got to Toronto, and Mike and Bruna and kind of everyone that was there made such an effort to make us all feel so comfortable with one another. And I think that, you know, we spent time kind of hanging out and just getting to know one another. And I felt like jumping in in the place that we did really took so much stress and weight off because it was, you know, these moments that we were dreading doing, I don't know if dreading is the right word, but like fearful of, and kind of getting those out of the way, you realize that they weren't even necessarily the most difficult scenes in the film. Although they may jump out on screen as something that's the most jarring or the most terrifying and horrifying, as they very much are, the small moments, you know, where she has with like Liam in the car or in the dean's office, you know, moments like that that maybe you'd write off as just another scene were actually probably the more challenging days that I had on set because it was not, you know, also physical, it was more internal. So, yeah, I mean, getting out of the mindset, I'm really lucky. I, I see my boyfriend and his mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, 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 you can wave your eyes. They're great there. Okay. Um, yeah. Mila told me to do that. <laughs> oh, no, but I, I have a very good support system. I'm, I'm very lucky. I'm a very lucky person. I have an amazing family. I have really good friends. Great boyfriends. Um, and also, I was working with people who made going to set every day happy and enjoyable. And although it was a dark movie, I just wanted to go back for more. Even now doing press, I'm like, I just every day I get to come and hang out with them. I'm excited. I'm like, oh, I can get to go get dressed up and just talk to them. When they're so bored of me at this point. But yeah. Anyways, okay, I'm done talking now. <laughs> and Mila, for you, I, both when I read the book and saw this movie, it, it's one of the best portrayals I've ever seen of drama. And it's it, it's so honest in the way that, I, especially it, it, I remember reading the book and being like, I don't know if I like this character <laughs> before I really learn more about her. Um, I'm curious, was there any special preparation you put into this role that, uh, you know, was particularly challenging? No. Um, <laughs> no, like, I want to give you, you know, answers that sound good, but I, I think about it and I'm like, do I just tell you the truth or do I give you the answer that I think people want to hear and I'll just tell you the truth? No. I prepare for every script the same way, for every movie the same way, for every character the same way. Um, I do a lot of homework, is what I like to call it. And I worked for eight years with this director named David Trainer, and he was the one that taught me a lot about muscle memory. And he was like, you have muscle memory, you train that muscle memory, and then you show up to shoot, and then you forget what you're supposed to do, and your body will just do it for you. And so I do a lot of that type of work, I would say. And then when I show up to set, I like to just be present, um, and then I feel like my homework is done. I know the character, I know where she's been, I know where she's going, I can tell you her coffee order, I know everything that she's gonna do that day. And then I just get to play around. So I would say across the board, every which way I've ever prepared has been the same. In this case though, uh, at least as a producer, you got to work one-on-one, -on -one, I believe, with Jessica. What was oh. that sort of like? Well that's, well here's, let me just talk about Bruna for a second <laughs> because uh, is it, it, Bruna's, one, Bruna's one of the greatest producers I've ever worked with. And, and I'll just say it really quickly, because oftentimes, Jessica's great. Writers are always very eager, you know, but only as eager as their producers. And so oftentimes, I don't think that producers get enough credit where credit is due. And in this case, it was Bruna and Eric from Made Up Stories and Picture Star who were so inclusive when it came to me wanting to put my five cents in. I was like, I'm so sorry, but I have an opinion. I'm so sorry, I have a thought. And instead of like brushing it off or, or you know, placating to, to me having opinions, Bruna was actually incredibly instrumental in inspiring me to feel like, 
Oh no, my opinions are good opinions. Like she was one of the first producers I ever worked with who was like, I don't know, ask me love. And I was yeah. like, oh, shit. <laughs> That's how people can be. And you know, it, it was really, I mean, just, it changed my life working with you, Brenna. It really, it really did. But to Jess, Jess, I go back, Jess was incredible. But Jess, I think, felt like we were all on the same team. Like none of us wanted to put out a project that we weren't proud of and that we didn't believe in. And you know, she had Puna in her corner and you can't beat that. Uh, because this is sad, I want to talk about the rest of the cast because you have an amazing Well, 
tell me now exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I would agree that this was like the healthiest set I've ever been on in my life. And I said that over and over and over again while we were filming. And I would be like, everybody, everybody got along. I liked every single person who worked on this film down to everybody. Someone that <laughs> like literally everyone. But that isn't just because every single person who worked on the movie was great. Yes, everyone was great, but sometimes everyone can be great and you can still feel like it's not that healthy of a working environment. Yeah. And I think that someone like Mike, someone like Bruna, someone like Mila, having these people who are, uh, you know, leading by example and showing that like putting kindness first, being like, Mike is so generous on set. He will talk about every detail you want to talk about and spend as much time with you as you want. And you know he gives, and he wants you to feel included. He wants you to feel special and important. And when you're being treated that way, you know when he's treating me that way, or he's treating my other cast members that way, or someone in the crew, and making everyone's voice matter, and making everyone feel the way that you're supposed to feel when you're working, I think makes for such an environment that you want to be a part of. And if you, if you can see it, you know, with someone who would come in and do one scene or one day or one moment, you know, day players and crew who were just so happy to be there and wanted to keep coming back. And were happy to come in and do one line or one moment or, you know, stand there in the corner for a shot just because they, you know, they wanted to be a part of this big picture, I guess. Um, things that I don't like, I don't know. I agree with the live shots for sure. <laughs> Runa, actually, from, from your point of view, what as a producer do you like from a director? What do what? Yeah. What do you like mm -hmm. from a director as a producer? Oh, what do I like? Oh, oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> budget. Um, no, 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 no. I, I also I don't like yellows. You know, I, I, I like people who have a strong vision and who prepare. And um, and I, you know, I want to support that. I think we should, all, you know, who are kind and who celebrate that we get to tell stories for a living. Um, what was special for me about Mike was the relationship he forged with Jessica Knoll, because it, she wasn't just the writer of the book, she wasn't just the writer of the movie, you know, a big parts of this were also her life. And so the way that he kind of mentored her, I would say, in a way from, you know, for, for you know, the years that we developed this, the way he invited her to set to be part of every conversation, for me was just, you know, because, not always, you know, there's some, you know, some stuff can happen that directors and writers don't always, you know, play nice together. And that's that's always a, a great shame because for me, I feel like, you know, vision can be shared and that authorship is very important. That's where the best work comes from. Um, so, yeah, that's, it, I feel the same way Mila does. It was, you know, I've been very fortunate to work with some wonderful directors. But it was so funny you said that thing because thing that I learned years ago. I, I worked, my, my first job was working for two great directors, Sydney Pollock and Anthony McGill. So I learned from the best, right? So, but Neela said something. I remember when I first met Gus Van Sant and someone said to me, you know, I was pretty young actually, I hadn't done a lot. And they said, oh, don't worry if he doesn't say very much because he basically just talks to me as something to say. And that's true. Like I was, I'm so happy someone told me that. But, and he, when he talks, he, it's just like, you know, it's like, God, keep talking, because he's, you know, an incredible human being and a wonderful filmmaker. But uh, when you said that, I was like, oh, God's <laughs> um, Yeah. I love that. Um, I want to again congratulate you on a really fantastic movie. I want to remind everyone, please spread the word. It, it comes out in November. November? It's Friday. <laughs> this <laughs> you're talking about. <laughs> October 7th. <laughs> This month. <laughs> 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 I'm talking about it with people because I did. Yeah. And if everyone can stick around afterwards, there's things I want to talk about. <laughs> 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 okay, congratulations. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you all for being great.